Hello again. Welcome to another installment of our header and footer builder partial series where we're taking just a moment to chat about these reusable bits of code and functionality throughout the builders. And today we will be chatting about backgrounds, if you couldn't already tell from uh, from my slightly terrifying seagulls attacking fish video here. Now, if you've been using X in the past and you're familiar with the content builder, you've already been using features like the background color or patterns or images or video for your sections. And that is all um, really cool because it gives you a lot of ability to achieve some really cool looks throughout your designs. The one thing we knew we wanted to do with our builders going forward though, is bring a little more control into the browser for you all to play around with ideas. Um, for example, a video like this, this original video is actually pretty high in contrast. There's, you know, the very light skies in some scenes, there's the darker ocean, but it's all pretty bright and using it on a design like this, where I've got these lighter colors, like my white text, all that would get kind of washed out. So typically what we would do is like what we've got here. I've got kind of this blue um, overlay that's really dulling the contrast there so that you can focus on the text and you just have this more subtle background going on. Now how you might've done that in the past is have to you know, import this video into your uh, video editor of choice and play around with the color. Um, and then you would export it, you'd upload that video, see if the color worked just right. If it wasn't exactly how you wanted it, you might go back into the editor, play around with colors again. It's just, it's a little more laborious than we felt um, it should be, and we wanted to make it easier to play around with those ideas in the browser. So, for example, right here, if I were to want to, instead of this uh, kind of blue hue we've got going on, use more of just a, a dark black, I could take this, bring that down just a smidge, and I'll refresh the browser here. And that's a little bit too much, one second. Maybe a little bit too much still. All right, now we're kind of getting somewhere. So. So what you just saw there was an example of why this is now so much easier in the builder. Instead of having to go back into your photo or your video editor and make multiple edits and re-upload and try things out, you can experiment with color and different videos and images and resources right in the browser. And it's a huge time saver when it comes to these um, sorts of things. So. Today, we're just gonna run through that and explain this new background partial to you guys and how it's used in the tool um, and show you guys a few little tips and tricks you might wanna keep in mind. And let's just jump right in here. Now, for right now, uh, at the time of recording this video, we don't have the video previewing in the uh, builder right now. And that's because we're gonna to need to write out some scripts to make sure that we can properly preview this video as it's added or taken away from the preview screen. So for right now, if you're working with video, you will need to make some edits and then hop back to the front to see how that's working. Um, but that's only for video and we will be getting that updated very soon. But you guys might already be familiar with this example. Um, oh, I've already got it uploaded there. Using our background image here. And let me get my color back to kind of where it is normally. Yeah. So this is how the, uh, the hero template is by default when you first load it up. And let's just take a moment to kind of walk through all of these different parts of including a more advanced background and how you might use that in your site. So when you first fire up a bar or a container, you will see this background control down here, which is pretty common. A lot of times in the setup box, you'll find these background controls. Um, but for the bar and container, because those are the only two elements using it right now, you'll see this little advanced checkbox. So if that is off, we'll just have our color by default, which is set here. Turning that on will give us these three new boxes here. So essentially what we have here is this advanced background partial is really made up of a div that is made up of two layers. And each layer, you can play around with the type of content you want to throw at it. So whether that is 
um, just a color. If it is an image or a background up image pattern or a video. Now what's really cool is you also have this second layer, this upper layer. So you could layer another um, a color on top of the video or your image you're using, which is what we're doing here. That's what we were doing with the video just a second ago. You could layer another image on top of your base image. So if you want to, for example, um, you could play around with having a full screen image here covering everything. You could then add maybe another image on top and maybe it's a pattern with like a little bit of a texture and it's sort of running over the image there. So that's a cool effect. Um, and you can play around with ideas like that. We do have some really cool plans to, once we get some improvements to Hubert in, which is our color picker, there will be a gradient layer. So you all will be able to um, put an image down and then this upper layer could be a gradient. So again, having one color running into another um, and you can play around with that. Um, so that will be really neat once we get that in. So there's gonna be lots of really cool stuff to play around with there, but for right now, We'll just kind of run through these ideas. And that's kind of the simple um, setup of it all. And also, just for those who might be you know, more concerned about this than others, those that div that's there is set up in a way to be um, very non-invasive. It's using some accessibility markup to ensure that like screen readers don't see it. It basically just gets ignored. It's like it's not even there. Um, but it gives you this extra bit of... Um, flexibility in the browser to play around with. And I'm actually gonna run through this setting here in just a second after we discuss this. So like we said, you can toggle each layer on and off if you want. So if we turn this color off, we get the original image shining through now. And you can see how just turning this on, even if I'm to just run through some different color options, it's amazing the you know, the quickness with which you can play around with some ideas, work towards a different look. Maybe I'll use a, a color that's in my editor here. So it's it really speeds up the workflow of experimenting with um, design options and layouts and looks and features. So that's really cool. I did want to take a moment to chat about the um, image layer because there's essentially a combination of things happening here. You can set either a background um, cover image, which by default is how it's set up because a lot of times people want these big hero images. Um, so essentially how it's set up out of the box is how you might want to use it, which sets up our size and our position to cover and center. Now, if you wanted to do a background pattern, what you would do, and actually let me get rid of, or I'll make this black, just a little more transparent here. I'm just gonna pick um, an image I've got sitting around in here. So nothing, nothing crazy. So we've got, um, We've got an image here that we've used in a couple other examples, and this is not really meant for a background pattern, but I'm just using it to demonstrate these examples here. But notice again, we've got it set up to cover and center. So the first thing we'll wanna do is set up the size. So I don't really know the exact size of my image, but you can play around. If you're familiar with the background size feature, you're essentially telling it um, how you want the dimensions of that background image to be set up. So we could say 100 pixels. Now what that's doing is essentially giving me 100 pixels wide. Notice how when I bump that up, it's getting a little bit wider. You can set a second parameter if you want, which is essentially the height, but you'll notice that it kind of skews the image there. So really you might wanna just leave the second parameter to auto or by default, just leave it at this first position to set that width. And that works great too, because if you're on a, if you're concerned about getting a graphic retina ready, you know you can upload a double size image and then size it down in half with something like this. You can also play around with percentages, uh, with how it plays on the background. Uh, we're not going to get into the details of how background size really works today, but just kind of explain how to get a repeat going if that's what you need. 
So we'll just say 100 pixels. Um, and then of course your position, um, you can play around with that too. So by default, you could say 0, 0, which will move the image into the upper right corner. You can say 100%, 100%, which will move it down into this corner. And you can play with any combination thereof. So 50%, 50% would be exact center. And there's also keywords too, you know, like using center. There's also some cool tricks. I actually did this in our um, little promo video, but you can even play around with using um, calc, which is one of my favorite things of all time. So let's say you wanted to position just this little background image kind of overhanging the bottom portion of this bar. So again, this is my X value and this is my Y value. So we could say calc 100%. Oops. Um, and then we could say plus, let's say 20 pixels. So what this is saying is position that image 100% away from the top which lines it up at the bottom and then plus 20 pixels. So that ensures that it's always getting cut off right where you need it. And that's a really handy trick to keep in mind because if you were just using a percentage value, um, the image would kind of change as the screen resizes. This allows you to get a kind of pixel perfect positioning for whatever you need. So let's just move that back to the center. And then of course we have the ability to, when we have our image set up, we can repeat it just one way. Now again, imagine if I did 50%. You can see how we might start playing around with, and I'm just doing this off the cuff. I literally have not planned this at all, but you might start playing around with some design ideas on the background of your bar leading into new sections. Um, we can repeat on the Y axis, play around with that. And then of course we have repeating for both. Now again, this is not the type of image you might always use for something like this. But we can play around their colors here, get something very subtle. And you can see again, this is something you, just like the video, would have to be doing in Photoshop, going back, editing the contrast, getting it just right. Um, in here, you just upload your resource and play around with your colors. And there's a lot that can be done just with that. So that is essentially the, the layering idea there. Um, oh yeah, and I know I mentioned gradients will be another layer option that we're planning on adding. There will also be some more filter options. So I don't know if you all are familiar with um, some new CSS filters for images, but there's some really cool stuff that browsers um, pretty soon will be pretty commonplace across all the major browsers, but being able to for example, make a, a color image grayscale in the browser or um, get kind of a sepia tone or, or just playing around with contrast, essentially like you're in Photoshop, but you're already in the browser. You just upload your original image and you can um, layer in these different effects. So that's something down the road too, that once there's a little more widespread support and we find, of course, like always, taking some time to consider the best way to include those features will be getting that in as well. So that's just something else to, to look forward to. Now let me jump to my footer because I want to explain the uh, border radius control there that you saw. So this is just my, uh, my columns template that you all are probably familiar with by now. And I'm going to add you know, I'm actually going, I'm just going to delete all these but one for now because we just want to focus on this. Okay, so let me add, um, like I mentioned earlier, the background control is available on containers as well. So I'm going to add our little, our same poly image, and I'm actually going to leave it dark like this just so you can see because I'm going to be demonstrating a concept here to you guys. I'm going to make this a, uh, a quite ugly red because we want to see something shining through here. So by default, again, like I mentioned, this background 
partial is actually a little bit of markup um, that's layering these two um, layers together. And by default, it does inherit the border radius of a parent that it's a part of. So for example, this background is on the container. If my container had a 15 pixel border radius, you'll see that for the most part, that border radius is almost exactly how it needs to be. There's a tiny little bit of that red shining through. But again, in, in a real life scenario, you would probably have you know, that set as transparent and you wouldn't even notice it. But I'm gonna leave this to demonstrate something here. So notice that with this inherit option, that div is automatically getting the border radius of your container. If we have this set to zero, you'll see that now it appears like a square. And again, that's because this is an actual div being layered into your content. So inherit is a keyword you can use to ensure that you always get that exact border radius. However, it does not work in this one scenario. Let's say you added a border to your container, five pixels, and we'll make it white. Okay, so notice we have inherit set and that gap, that red gap, is showing a lot more. Now how this kind of works is you have a 15 pixel border radius set on your container and this is inheriting a 15 pixel border radius but this five pixel border kind of throws the math off for how that inherit works. So how it would work in a situation like this and it gets more drastic if I were to make this 15 pixels. You'll see that gap is really showing now. We'll just leave five. So how this would work is if you want to get rid of that little bit of gap potentially showing through is you take essentially your border radius on the container minus the width of your border that you're using for this. So that would be 10. So notice how when we set that to 10 pixels, we now get a very uh, a perfect border radius look um, using that background partial. So that's just a subtle little thing and that's why that control is in there because that inherit option doesn't always work right out of the box and since you all have so much control in these builders over what you can create and you know where you want to add borders and do certain stuff you basically just need that ability to tweak these things um, on a case-by-case -case basis. So that pretty much covers everything regarding the uh, the background partial. I hope you guys found this useful and we look forward to getting a few more videos um, in front of you guys very soon. Thanks.